Oh, we're good. Oh, perfect. What's going on, guys? It is Tech Tuesday. I know we've been gone for a while, but we have been doing some crazy stuff. We've been filming, we've been testing, we've been getting a lot more product going. Um, but today we're going to be talking about sand tires and how it affects your ride and what you should do with them. But in but order to do that, Steve, what? why are we talking about sand tires? It's that time of year. It is that time of year, and I know everyone forgets about it every single year, but the dunes is right around the corner. Just like race time, right? Races always stay the same, but they always forget when they're around the corner to our last minute stuff. Um, so yes, dune season is upon us, and... I can smell the Imperial sand dunes right now, but enough about that. Let's go over to Justin Smith. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. Yes, we figured that it was only fitting that this time of year, dunes are kicking off. We got Camp Razor and Glamis in what? Two weeks, three weeks, Steve-ish? No, it's next, we leave next week. <laughs> oh, see, I'm already behind. Yeah, we leave, we leave next, way, we, way we leave next Wednesday. <laughs> way too busy. So uh, yeah, got Camp Razor in the dunes. So we figured if we're gonna go to the sand, might as well talk about sand tires because there's a lot that goes into those. I will start by first telling you the disclaimer, okay? My personal disclaimer. I know enough about sand tires to be dangerous, okay? I know some guys like uh, Mark, the owner of Sand Tires Unlimited or the old owner, has forgotten more about sand tire science than I will ever know. So whenever you guys have questions about whatever we're talking about on this uh, video, if I can answer them, I'm going to, but if I can't, then I'm gonna to defer to those who are the professionals, call the guys at all the sand tire companies and have them walk you through the process. But I'll give you the basics, because that's pretty much all I've got. Steve, you do wonders with the basics. I do, and uh, sand tires are also ribbed for our pleasure, so. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> you didn't practice that one, you just came up with it right now, didn't you? Well, all right, guys, so, um, First, I've got kind of a little small, small list over here on how sand tires work. But um, one thing that you want to keep in mind is uh, a couple of misnomers, right? Um, for many, many years, everybody thought in order to go through the sand, you got to drop the air pressure down to next to nothing. Um, also, a lot of people think that, you know, the best traction in a sand tire is having it stick like a slick at the drags, dead hooked up and gone, okay? Both of those are no longer true, at least uh, in today's four-wheel drive, UTV end of things, they're definitely not. So one thing, when it comes to air pressure, we wanna make sure that you guys understand. You do not need to run six, eight, nine pounds in your sand tires on a UTV to get around. You can actually have plenty of flotation. You don't have a 3,000 pound car in two-wheel drive, okay? You've got a 2,000 or 1,500 pound car in four-wheel drive, completely different. You can run factory knobbies with 18 pounds in them, and you can go anywhere you want in the dunes, no problem. As long, long as it's a turbo car with some power, you have no issue. Flotation is not the problem. So get that low air pressure thing off of your mind. That is something you don't want to do. There's a lot of negatives that go along with it, and we'll go over what they are. But air pressures need to go up. All the sand tire manufacturers will follow me on this. All the suspension guys are going to follow me on this. Air pressure is up. How much? No less than 10 pounds. Um, 12 to 16 pounds, pretty much right in that area is what most of the guys are gonna tell you. So starting and leading with that so that it's a common theme without, with, throughout this whole thing. Let's get over to the board. So what we get asked a lot is, you know, what tire or paddle size we should run? How many paddles and what size paddles? All right, well, that's assuming that you're going with a, a tire manufacturer that gives you different heights in sand tires. Um, the one thing I will tell you with tire size is that the height of this tire is measured from the carcass or the smooth part of the tire. You do not measure to the top of the paddle. So if you're looking for a 30 inch tire, you're gonna measure from here to the ground and hopefully it's not sitting on top of a paddle on the bottom when you measure it. But it is the smooth flush portion of the carcass of the tire that is your overall height. See. I always measure to the tip though, Justin. I always want to get every extra inch out of my measurements. So. This is because we have been trained by our ladies to understand that this is part of what's what we must do. But in sand tires, size does not matter as much to her. It does matter though to your vehicle performance. And that could actually matter a lot to her as well. So we might have some correlation here. Ladies know what they're talking about. But tire height, please, 
at the very least, choose the tire height that came on your UTV. So if your Turbo S came with 30s on it, you want a, a paddle tire that's a minimum 30 inches. If you've got a Pro R or a Turbo R that came with 33s on it, you want a paddle that is 33 inches tall. You need to check the tire height because not all paddles are created equal. They might say that they're 33 and measure 31, which is very much like most dudes when they're talking about this sort of thing, right, Steve, with their ladies? Yes, sir. Yeah, always shorter than they, than they say it is. But you make sure that you double check that because there's a big difference. We have had people come in at the dunes to get work done and they're like, ah, I bought 30s and we're looking at it going, <laughs> no. Measure it, it's 26 or seven inches. So it's a big, there can be a big variation. Get the tire height that your vehicle came with minimum. Personally, if, uh, if I've got a XP Pro, um, or Pro XP, whichever way you say it, Pro XP, and it came with a 30, I'm putting 31s to 33s on it. I want the height so I can get the ground clearance when it's fully bottomed out so I don't have the thing bottoming and the big G out so you get the suspension performance out of it. That's just me. But you want the minimum, or the minimum should be with height that comes with the vehicle plus more. As things get bigger, for instance, Pro R, comes with a 33, you need to be thinking about tires that are 33 to 35 inches when it comes to a sand tire for the dunes. So size, bigger is almost better. You can, not, you can overdo it, right? If you guys don't have very much power and you put too much tire on it, it's not a good thing. But you want to stay with the size that came with it factory. Paddle size and number of paddles. All right, here's what we're talking about there. On most paddle tires, you can choose the height of the paddle. That is measured from the base of the paddle to the tip a lot like Steven mentioned, you've got different heights. So for instance, this might be an inch, inch and a quarter size paddle. This is a sm smaller one, might be a three quarter inch paddle, but it's also got a cut out of the carcass to let this get a little bit taller. The taller the paddle, the more traction, the more uh, RPM tends to drop because the power of the vehicle can't push the extra traction you're adding with taller paddles. So. Typically, the rule when it comes to paddle size and number is the stocker or less power you have, the shorter the paddle you need. The more power you make, the more paddle height you need, or the more number of paddles per tire that you need. And if you make a massive amount of power, then you're going to go with the tallest paddle you can buy and a decent amount of them on a, on, on a tire. Now, how many it should be on a tire? Anywhere from 8 to 16 paddles per tire. Just depends on the height of the tire. A lot of that is changeable too. Steve, you had a question. Justin, talking about paddles and the, the, the knobs on them, do you recommend getting competition cut, a comp cut tire? So that has to do with uh, a lot of factors. And, and you know what, guys, everything I'm talking to you about, there is no one thing. You don't just throw a paddle at it and it fixes all your problems. Paddle compared to num height of paddle, number of paddles, tire diameter, weight of tire, and horsepower, and how you drive it in the dunes, all of these things need to be considered when you're picking this. But um, your question was a comp cut. Here's a comp cut. Take a look at this height right here, right? So this is the height of the tire carcass to the paddle before it was comp cut. And then this extra material was pulled out of the carcass, which does two things. It makes it lighter, which spins faster and is better for acceleration. Second, it increased the height of this paddle to the carcass, which is where the sand is riding on before it comes up to the next one, which in essence has made the paddle taller, which gives you more sand displacement, which is gonna come to you in the form of acceleration. You're gonna feel that, long as you have the power to pull it. So what we like to tell people on an average is if you've got a stock turbo Polaris that makes 170 horsepower, probably, a number one paddle, if you're talking about sand tires unlimited, they're gonna call them number one, number two, and number three. Threes are the tallest, number ones are the smallest. Stock turbo, number one paddle. Stock turbo with a flash and maybe exhaust and a little bit of work, so you're up in the 220, 230 horsepower range. A number two paddle. If you're making 300 horsepower and up, then maybe a number three paddle. Comp cut adds more paddle to that, so more power, comp cut's a good idea. Hopefully that answers your comp cut. Uh, question. So, paddle size. Smaller the paddle equals less horsepower. That's the, the combination you want out of the two. More power means more paddle to coincide with that fitment. 
pa uh, power and uh, paddle size. Number of paddles, as you start adding paddles, that's just very similar to adding height of paddle. Um, eventually, when you add too many paddles to a tire, it doesn't sit down inside the sand, it sits on top of the sand on the paddle, and you end up not scooping up enough. That's why you're gonna find like a max of 12 to 14 per tire, it just depends on the diameter. As they get bigger, you can put more paddles on. So there's a little bit of science there too. Wheel width. For the most part, the wider the wheel that you run, the more square the pattern of the tire is going to be where it touches the ground. Straight paddle on a very wide wheel tends to have less forward acceleration, but more slideability into a corner. Uh, you can pitch a flat tire, a uh, flat pattern tire, a whole lot more into a corner than you can a round one. If you go with a narrow wheel and stack that tire up and make it round like this front one is, okay, that is gonna have less tendency to slide, but it will have more traction going forward. Another thing that you can see with round tires, round tires tend to follow the grooves in the trail, and uh, it might tend to steer for you, like say your factory car on the road when they've just cut new grooves in it and the grooves move around and the car follows it. Same thing in the sand. And a lot of guys who haven't been to the sand before get there with paddle tires and they come right back to us. Man, this car's all screwed up. It goes everywhere. It's not necessarily the car. It's probably following all the tracks, depending on the paddle and size and you know, how much air pressure you've got and how round or square it is. Air pressure. We talked a little bit about this. Low air pressure equals flotation. You really don't need much of that in UTVs anymore. And if you have low air pressure, you tend to bottom out a lot quicker. High air pressure is better for the suspension and performance of the vehicle. It also will give you a little bit more traction. Think about this. A lot of people are like, ah, take the pressure out of the tire, it hooks up better. Well, that's true to a point. Because if you, for instance, the only thing that's pushing this paddle out and giving it structure is the pressure from within. So if you floor it, and this paddle is trying to hook some sand, right? But you take all the pressure out of the inside of this tire, then there's nothing supporting the paddle. It'll try and grab the sand, and it folds the paddle over itself. This whole paddle can easily flip back, and you end up with less acceleration moving forward. So there is a point to which air pressure is a problem with traction as you start lowering it. And there's a point where as you start to add pressure, it gives the right amount of support to the paddle and gives you more traction. And then eventually when you start running air pressures over 20 pounds, it's probably too hard and you lose some traction. So there's always gonna be a happy zone, middle area for that. Wheel offset, you know, we're pretty big sticklers when it comes to the right wheel offset for steering geometry and other things. You guys can look up all of our videos and, and articles on that. In the sand, it's not that big a deal. You can, in the rear, do whatever you want. Run 12 inch, 14 inch wide wheel, uh, no issue with that. There's no steering geometry to affect. Any of the toe stuff or toe control on like a Pro R or an, uh, an X3, it's not a factor. In the front, as you start wide running a wheel that's kicked out more, yeah, you're gonna get some feedback, but there's no rocks in the dunes. There's no big giant whoops that are sharp lipped uh, on the front which is typically where you get the feedback in the wheel with the wrong wheel offset. Since you don't have those things in the sand, it's not as big of a deal. You can run offsets that are wider than we would normally recommend. I'm not telling you not to run the right stuff, but you can certainly get away with it more in the sand, um, for sure. Sand air pressure. Um, we have actually done a full video on how air pressure affects everything when it comes to sand tires and traction. And, ground clearance and we actually dropped a car from one of the forklifts with a, with a uh, I, think, I think we cut, cut the strap by hand with a knife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will, put, uh, we will put that link for that video. Actually, how about right here in the video, right next to my head is the link for that YouTube. But if you didn't catch that, here's it's a March 2nd, uh, 2021, how tire pressure affects traction, right? Is that how it goes? Or should I go like this? Right it's sitting there. right here. Yeah, there's the link. Um, one thing that people don't understand, and this is one of the last things I'm going to say until we start talking about individual paddle tire options, is acceleration in the sand is equal to, it's what's called, the right way to determine this is not traction. Um, it's al almost opposite of drag racing on asphalt. It's sand displacement. So the more sand from underneath the tire that you can move from underneath the tire to behind the vehicle, 
that amount of sand displacement is equal to your acceleration. So if, for instance, you move 30 cubic feet of sand per revolution, and you can figure out a way to move 40 cubic feet of sand per revolution, your vehicle is going to accelerate almost 25% faster if you can move 40 cubic feet or 40 cubic inches or whatever it might be of sand. Now, you think, all right, I'm going to put bigger paddles on it and I'm going to move more sand. Well, that's cool, but if you didn't put more power to it, then it might run lower RPM and the tire speed might be less, even though you're moving more sand per revolution or more sand per paddle stroke, the tire might spin slower and you might move less sand overall with a bigger paddle. But as you start throwing way more power into the UTV, you might be able to do that. You might keep the uh, tire RPM up and sand displacement up. It's not about dropping air pressure and getting wrinkles in the sidewall all the way around it like launching a car at the drags and having dead locked up traction. Number one, you can never do it in sand. Um, you can never have absolute 100% traction. Number two, you don't want that. You want to move sand as fast as you can through, and through tire RPM and size paddle combination with horsepower. Um, last, air pressure. One thing we, we want to mention to you guys is most of these UTVs do not have any ground clearance when they're completely bottomed out. Um, with a factory 30-inch tire, most UTVs are dragging the skid plate on asphalt. So if you go to the dunes and you've run a shorter tire, now you've just got all the ground clearance out of the system and you're going to drag the skid plate everywhere and all the GLs. Two, if you have the right size tire but you run the air pressure low, when you come into a G out and slam it all the way down, say 3,000 pounds, uh, maybe uh, 20,000 pounds of downward fo force into a G out, the sidewall squishes, you lose three or four inches of ground clearance, and you drag the skid plate anyway. And then you're out calling us going, hey, we need some more bottom out resistance to keep the suspension working right. Well, it may not be the shock. You may not even have gotten into all of the bump stage. It might just be the tire that gave up all your room. The other thing, too, is the sand gives way. When you shake that tire and you push it into stand, the sand moves out of the way, even if the sidewall didn't give all that room away. And you might lose ground clearance there, too. So it's very important you have the right size tire, proper height. Very important that you keep the right pressures so you don't lose suspension performance, especially in bottom out areas. Everything else is just as important too. You want to call and talk to everybody that builds this stuff for a living and they actually know what they're talking about and they will help you through the process. Steve, I would imagine we yes. have a visitor. We do and uh, none other than Premature John is going to be on the line <laughs> with UTV Guide to talk about uh, a new sand tire. Yes, so uh, we tried to have an expert with every tire with us, or at least a list of everything. John Crowley with UTV Guide is at UTV Takeover in, uh, at right now, and he can tell you a little bit about the event, but also he's had personal experience with driving the System 3 uh, tire, and he can tell you a little bit about it as well. So hopefully you guys got John on the line. Question? Yes? You recommend beadlock or no beadlock for the dunes? Um, I don't think that beadlocks are necessary anymore because you're not running 6 PSI. We are running 12 pounds and up. You don't need beadlocks. John, how's it going? Hey. Tell everybody where you're at and what you're doing. I am in Utah at Sand Hollow for UTV Takeover. And I'm at the Shock Therapy Semi. Hey, Grandpa, can you clean your screen a little bit? It's kind of dirty so we can see your face a little better. <laughs> John, don't, don't put up with that with Steve. <laughs> Give Steve the finger. I can't hear you, Steve. <laughs> I can't hear you, Sonny. <laughs> oh, much, much better. There we go, John. Well, John, take over, man. Tell everybody about the event that you're at, Tell it, and everybody should come out and see you guys there, and then we can talk about System 3 tires. All right, so uh, Sand Hollow is one of my favorite places to uh, ride. Got awesome uh, rock crawling. Um, I've been here, gosh, probably 10 different times. Um, great place for, uh, there's a little bit of dunes, but it's not like glamorous dunes. Um, it's mostly rock crawling and trail riding. Um, and UTV Takeover has been here for probably, I want to say maybe four years or so. Um, they've do three different events a year. One of them is here at San Hollow. They also do Coos Bay in Oregon and also in Jake, Oklahoma. 
and uh, shock therapy has been to uh, all of those events this year. You know, um, they do a great job with their UTB takeover events. They, they run really well, lots of cool things to do, jump contests and a bunch of other stuff, right? A absolutely. Um, you could come here without a UTV and just hang out and watch all these events and be entertained. Um, where a lot of other events, it's more about riding. Um, so this one, you can ride all you want, or you can hang out and do events or do a mix of it. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. That's badass, man. Well, thanks for letting everybody know about that. Let's go into the System 3 tire. Now, you guys, we've got uh, System 3, we have Sandcraft, we have Method Tensor, we have uh, Santars Unlimited, all of which we have uh, uh, samples of so we can show you a little bit about what, what they have and, and how they work. The reason, John, we've got you on this is because you've actually driven the System 3 stuff, so you're the best one to maybe tell us how the, about how they work and, and what, some of the theories behind them. Yeah, I, um, I tried these out, um, gosh, it's probably been three or four years now, and uh, it was kind of an, an intriguing design for me because obviously you can see there's angled paddles and there's a whole bunch of them. Um, so I was kind of skeptical that you you could go as fast with them. And uh, I dragged uh, against some uh, straight paddles up olds. Um, and I really was right there neck and neck with them. Um, maybe not a comp cut or a scat track type uh, buffed paddle, um, but uh, most other paddles, you're really not losing any, uh, if, if at all, of performance there. Um, the, one, the one thing that I found was different about them is they're very predictable. Where if, with a straight paddle sometimes, um, when you're making a corner, sometimes they, they have a tendency to step out on you sometimes in your rear end. You're kind of correct overcorrecting because that rear end is stepping out on you. These are super predictable, so I like that. Um, and you mentioned a little while ago about there's no rocks in the dunes. Well, um, in several places there are rocks in the dunes, like Sand Mountain or uh, Idaho. Um, or even Oregon, where you've got to drive across the pavement or a gravel road. And these are a, a, a tougher um, tire than a, a buff or a comp cut, and they'll last longer. So in those types of environments, it's nice to have something where you can hit a rock and not worry about it as much. You know, you got a good point. I was mostly talking about, you know, like boulder stuff that would come back and give you, uh, you know, feedback in the wheel. But... It's really important to talk about, uh, like say up, up north in Idaho, you've got uh, you know, volcanic rock in the middle of some of the dunes and you gotta be careful with what you're hitting and driving over. If you've got paddles that are spread out, then typically those are gonna wear out quicker if you drive across, across an asphalt road or a parking lot to get someplace. But I can see how these would sit up on top and not necessarily rip up the leading edge. Uh, yeah, you, it, it's a whole different feeling as you're, instead of going thunk, 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 uh, across the asphalt, it's more of a because there's so many paddles. So if I was in an area where I had to uh, drive across asphalt all the time, I would seriously look at this style or something else that has more paddles that uh, you can use. Very cool, man. Anything else about this tire you want to talk about before we move on to the next? No, I think that's, uh, that's good. Awesome. Thanks for your heads up and your experience with these and letting everybody know what some of the good things are about them. And uh, certainly, I just want everybody to know that we're not, um, we're not repping anybody in particular. We're just kind of giving you guys some ideas of, of what different tires are out there and how they can work. Thanks, John. Yep. Steve, you got more you want to talk about with John? No, just his ancient wisdom on his, uh, on his technology with these paddle tires is pretty like, incredible. Thanks, like, John. You know, Socrates? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with some of, some of his wisdom was, you know, carved into rock. I was going to, but, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I get that all the time. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now that we've talked about those, let's move on and let's talk about kind of the old tried and true, been around forever, and that sand tires unlimited. Sand Tires Unlimited was making tires for buggies when buggies were two frame rails out of a Model T and uh, dually tires in the back with a Volkswagen. 
back in the day. There's pictures of it. So they've, they've been around a long time and have some knowledge, that's for sure. Back in John's day, though, it was all feet. You know, yeah, it was like Flintstone, Flintstone style. Flintstone <laughs> style back in his day. So we've come a long way since his time. So uh, Santars Unlimited, uh, been in the industry forever, um, definitely ha have more than a clue as to how things work. But we do have some uh, different versions of that over here on the Pro-R so we can show you guys. Um, when it comes to Santars Unlimited, there's typically uh, a couple different models that most of the UTV guys are gonna, gonna run. I'm gonna show you this front one in the, in the beginning. This is uh, called a big Tebow. This is a new tire that they dropped last year. It is basically designed for front end traction. Uh, what, like you, we had talked about earlier, the round tire has a tendency to not slide in a corner. So this would give us a little bit of um, side bite when it comes to turning. But the paddle configuration that's on it is definitely set up for traction and pretty much a forward acceleration traction only. The negative with this design is that it can, uh, it can push in a corner on a long wheelbase car like this one that's got a lot of weight in the back. So if you're really looking for instantaneous reaction on a front tire, it may not be the best, but if you're looking for traction, then that might be. Another style tire that Santars Unlimited makes is it's called Tribute. Uh, Tribute has one paddle, so it's a lot less aggressive when it comes to the traction side of things. But it's also got a rib uh, or Razorback on it that's directional. So this faces the outside as this tire turns this way, then sand uh, bumps up against this Razor, gives you traction to turn. As if you look at the, if you're going to make a right-hand turn, then the sand slides off of that and makes it a little bit easier for the inside tire to, to come around. Outside tire is typically the one that has all of the traction on a razor. Um, the tributes we've driven for many, many years. Love them as far as the traction is concerned. Love them as far as steering is concerned. Um, all around feel really good as far as what we like to do. But there's a lot of other styles too. Let's look in the back. One thing about Sand Tires Unlimited is that they've got a lot of tire height selections. You can go 29s, 30s, 31s, 33s. Uh, these happen to be a Sandblaster 33 that we're looking at on this one. They measure every bit of 33 inches tall, and that's 33 to the carcass, not to the paddle. These are uh, not a comp cut, which you can see the amount of depth in this, but they are a pretty aggressive cut. Now, I, like I said, you can get a comp cut that's deeper than this, and typically with a comp cut, you're going to see some of the... Um, material in, in underneath that's there for you know, the cords that are inside the carcass of the tire. And um, that's not gonna, it's not an issue when you see the cords, it just means it's a comp cut that's super light. This is a number one paddle, and, uh, you can, and on this you can get a number one, number two, or number three, depending on the horsepower. So with a 33 and stock engine, uh, we went with a number one paddle on this one. If you shoved a turbo on it, then I think you could probably run a number two, uh, maybe even a number three, depending on the boost. Steve and Dom. Steve first. Justin, <clears throat> with all this sand tire talk, there are a lot of people on here that say they don't own sand tires, that they would love to go to the dunes. So how would you set up a normal stock, like, on-the-road tire or, like, a, a, the normal tire that comes on the car? How would you set that up for the dunes? Because we do see a lot of people out there with not paddles. You know, really good question. So you take your all-terrain tire, and you're going to drop the air pressure that you normally might run. Well, it just depends on what you're already running, right? If you're, our, if you're 16, 18 PSI in there, then you might drop it down to 12, 11 pounds. Um, if you're already in the desert at 12 pounds, then you're going to leave it alone. We don't want to see you at 6 to 8 pounds, even in, you know, especially in a, a more all-terrain style tire. The sidewall is stiffer. Um, it'll blow off the bead a little easier with low pressure and a stiff sidewall. Most of these tires are a two-ply construction, so it's a very light uh, duty sidewall. It allows for movement and flotation, um, but on a radial, street radial, you're looking at six to ten ply, and those are a little bit tough. You will find yourself being able to go anywhere you want. You just have to pick your lines very well and pick wide lines and keep your speed up. You don't want to ever get caught in a tight line uphill because you just don't have the traction that these do. Dom. Since the KRX is so underpowered, what would you recommend for someone having one of them? I would, would, when I went to the dunes in our KRX, what I did was I took a cinder block and I threw it on the gas pedal and then I, turned, I flipped the, the key and I sent it. I never ever lifted and I never hit the brakes. That is the number one thing you want to do 
momentum, look ahead, plan ahead, don't get caught into small stuff on the way up a big hill, take your, take your time, get, take wide turns and bowls. Um, it would be important with no power to have a bit of a, a paddle tire, at least in the back. Um, but don't go shoving a short one on there, and on, on a KRX you want a 30 inch tire minimum. 30 with a small paddle, because you have low horsepower. That would be the best. Fact. Fact. Center block. Science. You saw it. <laughs> I did. I was there. I, I don't think there. that thing came off the limiter no. the whole time we were at the dunes. But it is fun. It, they're fun. They drive great. Um, so back to the rear. So Santars Unlimited. 33 inch tire. This is Sand Blaster. You can get them in a number one, a number two, or a number three paddle. Number one, two, and three is height. Number one, two, three. Height is horsepower, more power, more paddle. That's basically what you're looking at. This is a kind of a middle of the road between traction and sliding. Um, if you mount it on a wide wheel, it'll slide great. If you mount it on a narrow wheel, it'll have plenty of traction and won't slide as much. So you can tune it a little bit uh, according to that. So enough of Santars Unlimited. Any questions on that? You guys good? Next, we got Sandcraft sand tires. We got Sandcraft destroyers. These are a different style of sand tire that you guys may know of as a buff. What's a buff? Well, in, uh, in the past, what people used to do to, to build sand tires is they used to take a normal tire with tread, like say an all-terrain tire or whatever, and they would buff all the tread off of the tire, literally spinning this on a machine and grinding that off, getting rid of the weight, getting rid of the tread that didn't help very much when it comes to traction, and allowing for a paddle to be vulcanized or basically glued uh, to the tire. And these paddles are multiple options in paddles. The, the, the options when it comes to a buff are, are massive, probably the biggest options of any paddle or tire design in the sand. Um, a couple things that happen when you're looking at a buff. One, buffing it makes it lighter. Lighter is better for the dunes. Number two, this buff, this actual um, grit that you see right here, has traction in the sand. So not only do you work with the traction that the paddle is giving you, but you're also getting some traction out of this uh, roughness that's in the tire. That is one of the reasons why a buffed front, some people can run a buff without even having a razor, uh, directional uh, traction at all in it, and they have plenty of steering with just a buff. It was very, very popular with sand cars just running front buffs, but you also have more weight in the front and push the tire in. Now, Sandcraft has decided to run this uh, style of razor in the front, which is fairly low when it comes to heights of typical razors. And the reason is that is a lot of testing that they put into the system. Now, if you have a perfect set of dunes that are just glass sand and nobody's been on it, then in that situation, you might want to have a much taller razor than normal because you don't have any of the chop, chatter, and other tracks to worry about going over. But in reality, that's like 90% of the time you're not gonna get smooth sand. 90% uh, of the time you're gonna get really rough, chopped up, and tracked up sand. So when you're driving through those tracks, you're pretty much driving in other people's tracks. And if those tracks move around, then the front will walk and follow that if you have a tall razor. Well, Sandcraft used a, a shorter razor uh, in the front. That way, it gives you some traction when you wanna turn it, but when you're inside everybody else's tracks, it doesn't follow the car or force the car to follow those tracks. It's kind of a middle of the road to give you the best performance in the dune conditions that most of us are gonna run into. The rear, rear tires can come in different heights. Rear tires come with uh, obviously any, any width wheel, and Sandcraft does make their own wheels, so you guys have a lot of choices in wheel style and widths with Sandcraft. Also, you can choose different numbers of paddles, different heights of paddles, because all of these are made custom to order, ordered for you, custom ordered for you. So if you take the time to talk, call the guys over at Sandcraft, their crew is extremely knowledgeable. They will walk you through the process of tire height, like we've talked about, paddle choice, number of paddles, um, design a front that would fit your duning style, your UTV's weight, your UTV's power, and what you really want to get out of it. So take the time, call them, and they'll walk you through everything and make it exactly what you need. Sandcraft, quality stuff, definitely get them up. Last one that we've got here for you guys to take a look at 
is a brand new wheel and tire from Tenzer and Method. Um, Tenzer tires, Method wheels are a combination or basically the same company. And uh, so they're able to work together on much like Sandcraft in building their own wheel for the uh, tire package. Uh, same thing with Method and Tenzer. Now these are, uh, as you can take a visual at it, you can see this is a more aggressive rib design in the front. So this is gonna have a little bit more traction when turning. And it's also got a two-ply sidewall like most of the other tire construction uh, that we've talked about. It also has a tall tire. So when you're looking at a Tenzer, when it says it's 33, it definitely is 33. Another thing that you can see visually on this is their velocity grid technology. This velocity grid right here, it's designed to actually have sand fall into these holes and give you more traction under power. So these act like tiny paddles when you're under power. The velocity grid is similar to um, giving you the traction that a buffed tire would give you with that rough edge, but uh, in a much different way. This is a patent pending design from them and they've done a lot of testing with acceleration and other things to prove that uh, this stuff works and it definitely does. So if you want to have, if your driving style requires more front end bite in a corner, especially when you turn the wheel, you don't want to have a push, uh, then this might be a good choice for you. In the rear, these also have velocity grid tech, which is giving you traction between paddles. Um, and they have a molded paddle into the carcass of the tire. So unlike uh, a buffed tire with a glued paddle, these are molded in. Um, but unlike a Sand Tires Unlimited, these don't come in multiple paddle, uh, paddle heights. So this right here has been designed to go with the horsepower levels of UTVs between 185 and 230 or 40 horsepower between 1600 and 2200 pound UTV to be a perfect fit. So it kind of uh, covers a wider gamut. Now, if you wanted to uh, throw 500 horsepower in your UTV, then you might need a bigger paddle for that. You might need a little bit more aggressive stuff, but at that point you've got other options because you have people that can tune that too. Um, most of these paddle tires are extremely light. Um, I'm gonna let them tell you when you call them which ones are winning the lightweight wars in, in paddle tires. Um, but the goal here when it comes to how paddle tires work that I'm just trying to uh, um, let you know, it's not about the manufacturers and the differences between them because they will fit different driving styles and different UTVs perfectly and there is no one exact perfect system. But if you know a little bit about how they work, how tire speed and paddle size should be tuned to your horsepower because sand displacement is what gives you acceleration, how um, tire height is important to not ruin suspension function, keep you from bottoming things out, um, tire selection height-wise, you definitely don't want to go short. It's the quickest way to ruin everything in, a, in your dune experience uh, of almost anything I've seen. Also, low tire pressures are a no-no anymore. If you can keep all these things in mind when you're calling your sand tire manufacturer of choice, they will be very happy because you're fairly educated and they can tell you and push you into the ones that you want that fit you the best. Steve, shoot with some questions. Uh, one of the questions was, uh, somebody said a little birdie told them that Viking spring collars were coming back. Is that true, Justin? It is. Um, Viking spring collars are almost done. As a matter of fact, a secret new product that we're dropping for a lot of East Coast use where you can adjust springs, any of our springs on a factory shock will be dropped within about 30 days. So more to come. Dom, you got anything? Two questions. Do you think a Pro XP needs a catch a can? A catch a can? Yep. Is a catch a can an oil catch can? Yep. If it's a breather oil catch can, no, it does not. Next question. Mm -hmm. They're asking when are you gonna put a turbo on the Pro R? I don't know that we're gonna do it because I take it to Baja a lot, so it's probably not gonna happen on mine, but maybe you know, Ernie might throw it on this one. Uh, I think he's got plans to do that, and that means you got like 380 to 400 horsepower like right away, so it'll happen pretty soon. Would you carry a spare paddle tire? I would never carry a spare paddle tire because you're only a quick tow from camp at all times. Spare tires in the dunes are kind of useless. 
So, Steve, you got another question? No, no, you go ahead, Justin. Really? What were you going to say? I, wasn't, I was going to close it out. Okay, well, no, so I did have, it wasn't a question, but it was a statement. Uh -huh. And it said, I would love to say congratulations to Mitch and Lauren. Ooh. Because excellent. we just did what, Justin, over the weekend? That's right. So our um, part of our shock therapy family is uh, Mitch and Lauren. You guys know them probably very well from being on all the videos. And they just tied the knot, got married in, Cal in uh, Newport this last weekend. So that's where we were all at. And we're all recovering or entering uh, AA classes after this weekend. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to both of them. They're on their honeymoon. But you guys will see them in, in Glamis because they're going to come out there and work uh, with you next week. So you can congratulate them yourself. Both of them. Fresh rings. Yes. How cute. That's very cool. Adorable. Um, you guys got any more questions we can nail before we're out of here? Uh, people are asking, are there any open spots for Glamis Camp Razor? I need all the stuff for a Pro R. I think we're fully booked out, but if you are the phone still down? No, so the phone, the phones okay. in this building phones are, are up. working. Okay. Yeah, maybe let everybody know what happened with lightning. Yeah, so um, I believe a strike of lightning hit our building and blew every server and internet and router we've ever had in the building one. Um, so it is all getting taken care of, um, but it won't be fixed until, I think, late tomorrow. So bear with us on phones and emails and stuff like that, guys. Yeah, emails um, are slow, but <clears> I think the guys are on the phones, and you can call them and go over the appointments, but you're going to have to sweet-talk them to get a car moved in. Yeah. And they might tell you what we do in the years past. If we're completely booked, then come over around 9 to 11 in the morning. And if, if the work that we're doing for the day is going very quickly with no problems, we will try to sneak it in uh, at the end of the day. But if it's kind of, everything's going slowly, then we might have to push you off to the next day. But we'll do everything we can to get you in if you can't get an appointment by calling. Yes. Right? Don, correct. Anything? One last question. Is there a difference between the weight of the sand tires, and will they notice the difference? Um, there is a difference in weight. You guys are going to have to call all these guys and ask them specifics on that because tire heights and paddles are going to change the weight by a lot. But I do know this. Uh, one thing engineering-wise you want to keep in mind one pound of spinning weight is equal to 10 pounds of stationary weight in your vehicle when it comes to acceleration. So, if Steve could somehow pull 10 pounds off of his tire right here, he would be able to run faster as if he weighed 100 pounds less. Just it was a big deal. I will weight. say that this weekend when I ran to the beach that 110 yards, I was complimented on how fast I move for a fat guy. <laughs> a qualification for a fat guy. Uh, I resemble that as well. I do too. But yeah, you guys look, uh, one pound of spinning weight, let's say you got one pound per tire, and that's four pounds total is equal to 40 pounds off the car. So it's a big deal. You know, you get you know, four or five pounds per tire or 20 pounds of spinning weight for the whole vehicle, that's equal to 200 pounds. It's like losing a passenger if your sand tire, all four of them weigh four or five pounds less than another one. So yeah, it's a big deal. I would pay attention to it. Cool, I think we're good. All right, thank you very much for tuning in to our sand tire tech video. Hopefully you learned a few things on how this stuff works. Hopefully it makes you a more educated customer where you can choose the tire in a better way. Contact all the sand tire manufacturers on your own to get the details for all of them so you can choose one the best possible way. All right, with that, I'm gonna send it off to Steve and have him take us out. Guys, if you're looking to buy any of our product, please visit www.shocktherapyusa.com. If you're looking to give any of us crap, go down to the Utah UTV Takeover and talk to John a lot, okay? Or if you have any questions, call in 623-217-4959.